Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back to the show. Hope you guys have had a nice two week of break from the videos on my channel, and I hope you guys are ready to hop back into the world of Swift 3 programming now that Xcode 8 is out, and how we can actually migrate our current Audible project from Swift 2.3 to Swift 3.0. I'm going to show you guys how to do that in today's video. So I myself, I've been having a lot of interesting problems uh, in the last week trying to upgrade all my projects to Swift 3. So I'm going to go over how to exactly perform the migration step by going through step by step. And you guys can follow along and see some of the things that you might run into as well. So. What you just saw was the opening of the Xcode project uh, that you can download um, from the description down below. And we'll hit convert here, which is the very first prompt. And we're going to convert from uh, 2.3 to Swift 3. So all you do is you just hit next, and then you wait for the code to generate, and all of the syntax will be automatically converted for you. And the moment you hit save, the entire project will save the new syntax. And let's just use iPhone 7. And if you try to run the project, what will happen is you'll see a couple of errors on the left side. Now, because this project is relatively small in terms of the number of lines of code, you don't have to really, really fix too much. So lucky for us, we only have two errors that are currently showing. And it is flagging this background color of dot yellow. So the fix is to actually just remove the to uh, open and closing in parentheses. And clicking on this one as well, you'll see that it is the same type of compiler error. And the last remaining thing is to just kind of run the application here. And uh, let's see what we get. So this app is the current state of our, our application from episode two of the Audible series. And you can swipe through just like that, nothing has changed. All we're doing now is to just upgrade the project from Swift 2.3 to Swift 3 using Xcode 8. So obviously, if you haven't upgraded your Xcode, go ahead and hit the App Store to update the, uh, the program, and you should be good to go. Now, one thing I want to quickly discuss about the syntax is the actual two fixes that we uh, implemented earlier. And one of the new additions that I really, really find helpful is this color or this, um, this minimizing of the amount of things you have to type in code. So the old way of doing this in Swift 2.3 is actually call CV dot background color equals UI color of white color. So this is the old way of doing things. And now this is the 3.0 way of actually specifying the color. So the reason why uh, Apple or the Swift community decided to do this is because in 2.3, there's a bit of redundancy in this one line of code. You can see color here, color here, and color here. Now, one trick in Swift 2.3 that you can do is just remove this right here, and then this will actually compile uh, in 2.3. And uh, the problem here is the color redundancy is still here. So what they did was they remove this color here. And because color is kind of like a property or a class property now, you can just remove the parentheses altogether to get this syntax right here, which eliminates quite a bit of uh, redundancy. And your code is a lot cleaner and for me, it's a lot easier to type. And you guys know how much I like to do things programmatically instead of setting up things in the storyboard. Anyhow, I won't get too much into that. And this is our project right now. If you go into the warning tab, you can see this uh, little update that is telling you to perform and just click perform. I'm not exactly too sure what that does. Hopefully it does uh, more good than bad. Anyhow, our view controller now looks like this. And our project now looks like that. And that was pretty easy, right? Nothing too horrible as I've, uh, or not, not as bad as my other projects where I've had a lot of Cocoa Pods that just totally went down the drain and we've had to implement or waste a lot of time just fixing things up. Anyhow, let's look at our current project and 
what is it that we want to implement inside of our uh, kind of our pager here that we can page this collection view, right? And if we go back to kind of our finished application, I want to show you guys how to first add in this bottom component, which is a UI page controller, and then the very top two buttons up here that says skip and next, and then the page controller on the bottom. So let's look at how to do this. Let's drag the simulator up here. And the first thing I want to do before I actually do any implementation is to show you guys, or not so much show, but I wanna clean up this view controller file here by taking this extension code. So I'm gonna cut this and let's move it into a new file on its own. And I'm going to create this Swift file called extensions. And in here, all you need to do is import UI kit with a capital K and paste in this extension code. And the reason why I do this is to actually uh, clean up the view controller so that you don't have any unnecessary bits of code inside of this file. View controllers are usually pretty, pretty large as your project gets more sophisticated. So let's just clean it up while, uh, while it's still early. And here we go. The pager still looks just like what it did before. And we are kind of ready to do some more coding here. And inside of the extensions, what I want to actually do is this. So to make this project a little easier to code and to save you guys a bit of time, I'm going to copy over some code from my other project here. I'm going to completely replace these anchor methods. And now we have three methods instead. And don't worry so much about this. I'm going to walk you through exactly why I'm doing this and how to use these convenience methods. So let's go back to view controller and place the UI page controller that is down here into our view controller file. And the way to do this is to first construct this page controller down here. And let's just do this programmatically again, or I think I said page controller. This is just a UI page control. And we'll just construct it with a let PC equals a UI page control, return this page controller out and execute this closure, giving us the page controller or the UI page control. Now, in order to get this color to show up here, we can actually just specify PC dot C indicator color. And I'm going to use a uh, light gray color. So you see how this is actually just going to compile. Um, and if you click on this, what does it do? Light gray. So make sure to, uh, to remove the color syntax from your colors. And here we go. Now that we have our component, we can go inside of view to load and just add it into the bottom of our entire, uh, in our, our entire view. And here's how we do it. Right below here, we just say view dot add sub view of page controller. So nothing too bad there. And let's see. So page controller, we'll do this. I'm going to call this new anchor method right here. So just anchor. And let's just use this guy right here. So there's a lot of stuff here, but it's really useful because we can simply uh, clamp it down to the very bottom by doing this. So how do we anchor this? Well, this needs to anchor to the left, right, and bottom of the entire view. So for the top, we'll use nil. And for the left, we'll use view.left anchor like that. Bottom is view.bottom to get to the bottom. And this will be view.right anchor. All these constants right here will be top constant of zero, left of zero, bottom of zero, and right of zero. So the way this page control works is that it's going to expand fully left to right. And because it, it's, it's a full width, the dots will actually just center in the middle. And that's how UI page control works. And that means width will be zero. And the last remaining dimension to specify is the actual height of this these these dots here and the height will just specify with 30 and running this i don't think we'll see anything just yet because we don't have a number of pages inside so let's just use a value of three run the application you'll see this warning here i'll talk about this just a little bit later 
so everything works. Uh, this error, just ignore that for now. And uh, actually, I don't think it's error. I think it's just Xcode being picky. Okay. Now you see these dots on the very bottom right there. So that's pretty good. The one thing we want to actually specify is the current page. So PC current page tint color that gives us this orange dot right here. So what is this orange color? Well, I'm going to just use UI color and we'll use, let's see, what is this? Uh, red and the values are actually this two. 47 over 255, 154 over 255, and we use 27 over 255 with an alpha value of one. So if we run this right now, we're going to see the actual current page um, be a orange dot, which is the first index of our page. So that's how uh, you can get the page controller inside your UI view pretty easily. You can move this a little bit higher if you just specify the height to be just a little taller. It normally vertically aligns it to the center of the uh, the actual page control view. And that's that, so nothing too bad. And to fix this warning right here, we can actually specify an underscore to take in the actual return value of these anchors. And I'm not totally sure why these errors are showing, but uh, Let's just click on one of these guys. Huh? Click here. What does that give me? So then everything looks okay. And Xcode 8, you know, just came out, so it's a little buggy. And uh, here we go. What else do we want to implement inside of our uh, login component? Well, let's see this guy right here, this, this skip button and this next button. I can include it inside of my controller by going to view controller. And right next to this page controller guy, I'm going to say this. Uh, let's, let's see, skip button equals the B of type UI button. And let's specify a button right here, UI button with a type of dot system under uh, lowercase, I believe. And you just return this button now here and you'll get this button. So before you can actually see the button, you need to do this thing called set title and we'll just use a value of skip with a state of normal and here is our skip button i believe you also have to specify the title color and what is this title color well i can copy this here and paste that there and just use a state of normal again so this gives us this orange skip button and we need to add it into our view by saying add sub view let's see skip button and we can do this right here we can say skip button dot anchor and we'll figure out what these anchors need to be so first let's anchor it to the top so we'll say view dot top anchor and we'll also anchor it to the left like this and the bottom will be nil because we're not anchoring it to the bottom and likewise for the right and we'll just use a constant of zero for all of these uh, padding, padding variables, I'll call it. And the width and the height is going to be, let's see, let's use a value of perhaps 80 and a height of, let's just use 50. I think that'll give me what I want. So let's run this application now. And you'll see this warning here. You can just fix that with the underscore trick again. And perhaps I'll... Get rid of the file explorer. Here we go. The button is now placed on the top left like that. And so if you wanted to move it to the left a little bit, all you have to do is specify a smaller uh, width constant. And you can say something like a uh, value of perhaps what, 60. And if you specify the top constant of, I think perhaps 16, you can push it down from the top. That's how these values work. And the reason why I'm doing this is to just save a lot of time for you guys. Um, essentially, if you command click into this method, you'll get all of the lines of just adding the anchors. And at the very end, you just specify all of them to be true. So that's how that works. Make sure to download the project uh, with a link in the description to see how all of that works. 
Okay, now that we have this skip button, you see you can click on it, change its color, nothing too spectacular here. Let's finish up by including this right button with this next here. And I'm going to copy and paste the entire bit and call this next button. And inside of the title, let's just specify a title of next and everything is going to be just okay. And let's add this to the view with view dot add sub view next button. Finally, we can say, let's see, underscore next button anchor. And what is this going to be? Very similar. We'll anchor it to the top with a left anchor of nil, bottom anchor of nil, right anchor will be the view dot right because we're trying to clamp it to the right side. And then the top constant, let's see, 16 like above, zero. Let's see, right constant of, let's see, bottom is zero, right is zero. Width is going to be 60, height is going to be 50, just like the skip button here. So running the application now, you're going to see the next button. Let's see if we get it. So there it is. That's how you get the next button to show up in your application. So everything looks pretty good. And we're going to have to finish up on how to actually change this uh, UI page controller to match whatever page you are on every time you swipe the view over. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. Make sure to give the videos a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you want more videos like this. Now, for all of you guys that are still working on Xcode 7 and 2.3, make sure to upgrade to Xcode 8 and to start coding in Swift 3.0. Um, all of the future videos for this channel will be done in Swift 3.0 and then Swift 3.1 or 2 whenever they come out. We're going to try to code all of our projects here with the latest and greatest tech from Apple. All right. Hope to see you guys next time. Bye.